Chelsea is being here in Tenerife and I'm really happy with this. I'm so excited. <laughs> of the LCS in Tenerife this week. We've already seen the standings change back and forth more times than Udir, and we still have a full day of matches to come. Bienvenidos de nuevo al último día de la LCS en Tenerife. Esta semana ya hemos podido ver cómo la clasificación ha estado moviéndose más veces que Udir, y aún tenemos por venir un día entero de partido. So we'll be starting off with Fnatic versus Gamut. Later on, you'll be watching SK take on Ninjas in Pajamas, followed by EG versus MYM of third, and finally, Alternate versus Lemon Dogs. But first, help me welcome the teams for the first LCS match of the day. On the blue side, coming off a crowd-pleasing win yesterday, put your hands together for Fnatic! Side currently sharing first place. Let's hear it for Gambit. We'll see them play in a few minutes, but first I'll pass you to our commentators who will catch us up with what's been going on in the league. For the English stream, it's D-Man and Freak and Quinton Igilligan for the Spanish. Thank you very much, Shox. Welcome to the final day of the European LCS here in beautiful Tenerife. We've got four great games in store for you today. But before we get into those matches, I want to recap the action so far this weekend. We're actually pretty much back where we started at the beginning of the week. If you lost on day one, you won on day two. And, well, that was good news for the Spanish crowd because all the Spaniards lost day one. <laughs> and then all the Spaniards won uh, yesterday, so it at least, you know, they got the cheer for their favorite players, at least yesterday. They got a little bit of a cheer. So let's take a look at the very familiar standings. Aranea and Alternate are on top once again. They are tied with Gambit for first place. And just one game behind them, Fnatic, Lemon Dogs, and Ninjas in Pajamas have a three-way tie for third. And just below them by two games are Meet Your Makers, Evil Geniuses, and SK Gaming, all tied at sixth. And of course, that could all change today. Our very first game has the potential to shake things up straight away it is going to be Fnatic versus Gambit it's a monster it is a monster these were the teams to watch all throughout the spring split the spring playoffs themselves were a nail biter a 3-2 victory for Fnatic mm -hmm. very very narrow there and so far in the summer split these teams have only met once but History's repeating itself. Fnatic is 1-0 up on Gambit in this split. Oxygen tanks were required for that game as well, I can tell you. Let's take a look at the rosters, though. It is going to be blue side for Fnatic today, and it does mean that Soaz, he will be starting off in that top. Cyanide, the jungler. Peke, very popular here. Eke Peke, I believe he's uh, known Peke. as Eke Peke. Uh, I'm not too sure, probably butchering the pronunciation. Pushu is the AD carry and Yellowstar as the support. Meanwhile, on the red side is Gambit Gaming, Darien in the top lane, Diamond in jungle, Alex H, the mid lane carry. Ganja, the AD carry, and uh, of course, Darker, the support. And you guys at home, you've been voting for who you believe is going to win today. So before we get going, let's check out who do they think it will be for It's a very, very close one. 54% towards Gambit. And honestly, when you look at the standings, they're one win above. And you say, OK, yeah, they're mm. one win higher, 54%. But remember that historically, Fnatic has gotten the better of these guys, at least as far as 2013 is considered. Yeah. So uh, there's kind of an edge one way or the other. And they're technically 1-0 up as well. Remember, of course, you guys at home, you can get over to lollysports.com. We are on the final day, so another four matches today to be voting on. And don't forget, of course, you can vote for anything that happens across all the weeks as well. There's a lot of North American and European matches yeah. to go next week. Go go vote for week nine, the final game. Just just go for it. You can, you can rest your... Uh, you can try it right now, but either way, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yesterday, of course, we did see Fnatic. They did pick up a very important win over Meet Your Makers. It was a big confidence boost for them. The team desperately needed it. And they also kept them in touch with the top of the table. Yeah, so Fnatic has always been a team that at least I've celebrated for the really good solo lanes, and that Meet Your Makers game was no exception. Soaz went 7-1-13 and 13 on Jace, and it was just true Fnatic fashion. He actually teleported in to kill the Nexus at the very end. Peke on your screen right there went 8-1-14 and 14 as Lasso 
Sandra. Uh, he was even in a 1v2 lane to start, so to carry from there is impressive. He only died at the very last push of the game. And also, I've got to give props to Yellow Star, the new support. He brought out a new champion this time in Nami and went 3-0 and 14 in that game. So if all those guys put up similar performances, honestly, I like Fnatic's chances here to win. Yeah, Gambit on your screen there. They are at the top of the standings, joint with Alternate. And now they're going to be looking to try and cement that position with a victory here. They will also want revenge for the opening game of the summer season at DreamHack, the very first one where they lost to Fnatic. And it was a bit of a shocker straight away. However, of course, yesterday they had a very rough performance. And against SK Gaming, they're going to have to focus today. And it really seems that Gambit have a tough time if they lose the early game. Think back about all their upset losses, Lemon Dogs and SK Gaming within the past like week and a half, and it was early ganks by the opposing jungler or clutch thresh hooks in lane that snowballed the game out of Gambit's control. So to fix that, in my opinion, I want to see Diamond on an early game champion, Udyr, Jarvan, Lee Sin, things like that, or at least show up to lanes with good crowd control, because if they get something early there, then they can kind of snowball pass that outthink their opponents. But you think about that loss to SK, it was Jungle Evelyn with his lanes as Malphite and Zed who don't really have any hard CC early on. There's no ganks to be had, and so they give up the early game. So I'm looking back at the, the previous time they met, which, like we said, was the first match at DreamHack, and the bands, honestly, are probably going to be fairly similar. From Fnatic, it was Evelyn, Shen, and Jace, so we could possibly see them again. Of course, this time they are blue side, so it tend, tends to be different which way you get on a ban. Gambit banned out Nunu, Twisted Fate, and Jarvan, so again, actually fairly similar bands. We could be seeing similar things. These are these are champions you tend to respect on both sides. You look at Alex Itch, he did have a uh, respectable Master Yi game. We even saw it come out at, uh, at MLG Anaheim from Dignitas, and that pulled some respect bands as well. But the thing about a Master Yi pick is it only really works in compositions where you snowball ahead. Master Yi only has one mode, and that is kill more things. Mm. If you're behind or your team is behind, you don't get to do much. And if your opponents are very well controlled and don't overextend or never get caught, you don't get to snowball ahead as you. You don't get the resets. You don't kill off the fights. Or if you fight like a really tanky composition or one that split pushes a lot, you never get those fights. You never have the option to play the real blow your face off AP Master Yi. And what do we want to see Diamond on? You talk about how you want to see him on an aggressive early game champion, yep. something he can control, or the other lanes need CC. What are we expecting from him this time? Uh, basically, it really depends on the bans from Fnatic, because he's picked Evelyn every time it's been available, mm. and has just gone for it. it oh, anytime that it wasn't banned, he's gone for that champion. However, Fnatic can play that into their into this sort of wheelhouse. If, if Twisted Fate and Shen and these early CC champions are removed, they can let them go Evelyn and be like, I dare you to counter gank because we just don't really care too much. And when you've got guys like Peke who are such good players as assassins and as split pushers, Kha'Zix, we did see him today in the, uh, mm -hmm. the Challenger well, yeah. Finals, but we don't see it in the LCS quite so much anymore. Zed's still a possibility, Kasten's still a possibility. He can snowball ahead that way, be a split pusher, and try to outdo Alex Itch, but um, as long as he's not getting camped early on by Diamond, he'll probably have a great game. So we are just waiting for a uh, machine to be swapped around, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are just tuning in, why, wondering why the game has not gone underway, I don't think it's Darian. Darian simply just stood up. It was a fanatic. I think it was so as his PC that they are just sorting out. Constantine just behind them there, or Groove was his uh, Counter-Strike tag as he uh, was back in WCG 2005. He attended mm. as a CS manager, so he's uh, well aware. That's, he's the coach, of course, of Gambit. Has been uh, since the pretty much the creation of Moscow 5, as far as I'm aware. He's been there the whole time, so definitely a guiding hand for all of Gambit. Meanwhile, Fnatic, they of course have Harry in the background. He's going to be lingering there. I think that's who we just caught a shot off strolling on past. And, and it's so important to have good management and coaches in for the team in general. You look at how Ninjas and Pajamas have really skyrocketed up of late, yeah. and it was Deficio having to be the de facto leader and the manager keeping everything together. And now that he's had that weight off his shoulders because of the Ninjas and Pajamas organization holding him up, he is exploded as an amazing support player, right? Deficio has been coming into his own amazingly well and helping hold the team up and being part of that almost unstoppable Defrizio lane. And when you look at teams like Fnatic and Gambit that have really good backing from the organization side, the players get to focus on practice, focus on refining their own skills, and it's no wonder these two teams are in the top three. And, and let's talk about the league itself at the moment, because we've only got three weeks left, three game weeks, and that equates to what, eight matches next week, 12 matches the week after, and then 20 in the final week nine. Mm -hmm. 
that's not a great deal of matches. Just, well, 40 matches overall. 44 counting the four we have here. 44 in, involved in counting the four we have here. These standings are so, so close together. You just look at it, it's 10-7, 10-7 for the top two, 9-8 for then the next three. So they could all be top by the end of today. Yes. Any of those players. And then if you look behind that, it's just 7-10. So those three, all within a clump, just one week could turn that around. Yeah, the end of the day could have a four-way tie for first place, or we could have uh, you know, the third and sixth place teams get a lot closer as well. And this is the really cool thing about the European LCS is just think about yesterday, number one team Gambit Gaming at the time lost to eighth place SK Gaming convincingly. Convincingly, and the that's number the second time SK had done that as well because yeah. they did the same to Alternate a few <laughs> exactly. weeks ago. Exactly, these teams you have to respect every single one of them. A three game switch between the two doesn't mean much at all. And you compare that to the North American side, where actually, even that switching up, you had Velocity Esports have a 2 0 week as the far and away last place team. Mm. So I think that's getting a lot closer. I mean, compared to the uh, the European spring split, where you had a pretty obvious top two, a pretty obvious next two, and then the bottom four fighting for positions, now it is really everyone together and even as you've just seen in this week all the teams have gone one and one right you had a, you had a first and last place every mm. team has gone one and one so far maybe they stretch out a little bit towards the end but even still up until the last week i would be surprised if any team were counted out before week nine yeah no perfect weeks and of course that super week is going to pile so much pressure on these teams five matches for every single team that week so cyanide there it's been having a tricky time in the jungle, if all's told. So as in the top lane, he's been pretty vocal as well in that top lane lately. Not happy about his Shen performance, not happy about having to play Shen at all, it <laughs> seems. So I feel like it's a common trend where the top lane, and this is sort of how top lane breeds its players, though. It's, it's this sort of like Wild West wasteland where you've got to scrap and fight all the time, and it breeds these like hardened like players who just want to fight all the time and and play aggressive champions that brawl a lot. And Shen is not as much that play style. He's a more reserved sort of I'm a tank, I initiate for the team, and that's it's not how these players have sort of bred themselves. So they sort of prefer these more fighting heavy champions, and so it's like, well, yes, I'm gonna of course play for my team and fulfill the role that we need, but. They're just more comfortable on these high fighting champions. We'll see what champions they do go with. Just to remind you, the picks last time that they had, Malphite, Xin Zhao, Ezreal, Master Yi, Fiddlesticks. Not sure we're gonna see quite the same. Xin Zhao is possibly for Diamond. That was the uh, Gambit's team, but Kazix, Varus, Volibear, Janna, and Elise. Obviously, this was back when N-Rated was there as mm -hmm. well. So he was the Janna player. Elise is still a strong top laner for Soaz and has been an incredibly strong jungler as we've seen for pretty much most of the teams these days. Yeah, Dexter in particular. And it's interesting because there's, she's one of those really highly sought after picks in the European LCS. You've got about four to six champions that are in like more than two thirds of champion selects. They're, they're banned or picked a heck of a lot of the time. And most of those champions are actually at about 50% win rate. Twisted Fate is like plus one wins over losses that even though he's so heavily sought after, he's actually pretty much a wash as far as power goes. Elise is the one that stands out as an actually very high win rate among those sought after champions. And we've seen it kind of more and more be one of those go-to first picks. And when you've got players like Soaz who can crush with that champion, it's a ban I expect to see here from Gambit. Absolutely, so picks and bans should be getting underway in just a few moments. We're just waiting for the teams to sort it out and get ready to go. You can see packed house here in Tenerife. We are at the Tenerife land party. It's a comic con on the side as well. It's a, it's a 1600 person land as well. It's uh, one of the biggest in the islands, certainly, certainly in the islands. I think one of the biggest maybe in Spain as well. And uh, we heard from Aaron Air just the other day. He's like, absolutely loving it here. He's like, I'm going to tell all my friends to come over here. Mm -hmm. There's a pool down the side. I mean, it's perfect, really set up. You've got a, a great big pool, in fact, three great big pools, to yep. be fair. You can come up, play games, have yourselves a drink. It's, walk it's, for five minutes. Walk for five minutes. You're in accommodation. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what more a gamer could ask for. Um, well, maybe the sunshine's a bit scary for gamers. I don't know, but but you can choose. You've got a nice it's scary roof for right us. Here. I mean, I'm just thinking of all the players that have got burnt. I've just actually read a tweet from Freeze saying, "Sun one, Freeze zero. I'm absolutely burnt to a crisp." Well, when you consider his screen name, it's an obvious <laughs> hard counter. <laughs>
Right, fire beats ice. Hunter, like a, that's a double damage attribute right there. He's be, he's he's probably gonna tag up his NIP water after this day. <laughs> so here we go, picks and bans going through. Udia being taken away and Shen. So again, Diamond Prox being targeted along with Darian Nunu yes. and Zerath being taken away. We did see Peke running that the other day, and it worked out okay for him. But that was in day one when they lost. It's interesting. I'm surprised to see the Zerath ban come out. Nunu, I'm not surprised by it. Is a, it is a Cyanide champ. He does pretty well with that one. He's one of the junglers that I actually trust to be on Nunu and excel with that one. So I like that ban choice. The Udyr and Shen bans I like as well because, again, you, you limit a lot of Darien's top lane options that synergize with Jungle Eve. And that's the thing. I really think that if you run Eve, you need a CC lane to gank for or it's pretty useless here. So if he goes back for the Malphite or goes for something like Aatrox, Aatrox can work, actually. He's yep. got the knockup and slow, but um, I, I expect Gambit to go Evelyn and Fnatic to be okay with that. From Cassian and Jace to final bans, which does leave Please. a number of options open. And honestly, Gambit actually normally go for Sona, so oh. Fnatic might be thinking of this and thinking, okay, they're going to lock Sona in, but what else no, could they take? Twisted because Fate they... is available. Mm. They're going to go for Elite. Okay. I don't think Gambit will go for TF. It's interesting because I thought with the Cassian and ban, he's one of the characteristic counters to TF. Um, that that you you ban Cassidy and you look at, and you look at the the Evelyn there or sorry the Elise there but uh, because Gamut had to respect the Jace from Soas they give up the Ev uh, the Elise and that's a good first pick there that you do have to be worried about. Um, I still think TF is a likely pick up here for Peke because he's just removed some of the the major counters mm. there. Um, however, Gamut I like them going for Thresh here. I know they picked a lot of Sona that's been really popular. But if they're still on that Evelyn hype train for the uh, the Diamond Jungle, picking up a CC lane for the bottom to take down Pushu and Yellowstar makes a lot of sense. Yeah, well, of course, Gambit tend generally to go with that Sona. So this does interest me. Misfortune, that's been a pick for Genja. That's very popular in the spring, and that has Thresh locked in. So we're not going to see Sona this time around. And as you mentioned, Twisted Fate available. Lots of his counters taken out. This could be a perfect, perfect pick for the backdoor master. And it just depends if Peke is comfortable fighting against a Zed. Because yeah. that is a champion Alex will happily bring out. You can outplay a Zed with TF. You can go for the early Zonias. You can get some early armor in there and be okay. Double Thorin's Ring, Seeker's Arm God, you tend to be okay in the duels. Then you can try to outroam the man, but uh, it, it's always a bit of a risk. You know that's available and one of the core champions there that Alex will play. So the Misfortune Thresh lane is cool. It's a bit of a return to form for Gambit. Uh, they can easily go for more area effect crowd control with this lineup. They could run the Malphite back in. They could run the Jarvan in there as well and set up all kinds mm -hmm. of fun things. And with Fnatic going for this bottom lane here, they're going to be happy to go heads up. Honestly, the all-in potential is, is decent from Thresh MF. So... Yellowstar will have to dodge some hooks, but the poke from Verisona is so strong that they can wear down the bottom lane from Gambit and win as long as they can dodge skill shots. So interesting. I think both teams are trying to bait themselves into a misfortune here. And I think, I believe, he's still 100% pick ban rate. So this could be the first time that he could go through, maybe not get chosen, or will it be the final choices? Gambit, of course, about to make their picks. What will we see from the jungle from Diamond this time? Well, Gambit has the luxury of last pick, so they can wait to see a mid laner, they can wait to see a jungler, and this is what they're going to do. They're, I like the Aatrox, I like this a lot. So there we go, Evelyn in there, and both of her lane, that's a good setup for him. So uh, it's Fnatic to make some choices. They get to, of course, know what the top lane is. It's going to be Soaz versus uh, Darien and at the Elise versus Aatrox, but they've got to choose their mid laner blind. Mm, and it's definitely giving them choices that they're having to discuss here. You can see there's a lot of focus on the players at the moment. Dark are almost falling asleep. He's uh, ready and waiting to go <laughs> in the bottom there. Lissandra would be an interesting pick. This could, of course, mean that the Elise would be the jungler for Cyanide. We haven't talked about Jarvan. He's Jarvan being available. And that could switch things around. This means Twisted Fate is not going to get selected. It will get let through. Will Alex Hitch go for it? Will he take it? Is it the right choice for him? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Medinger. Unlikely choice here in the mid lane. I'd yeah, love no. to see it. I mean, every once in a while, like every week or two, we see a champion we didn't think would come out show up there. Back in the spring split, Zareth shows up. And we're like, mm. oh, the first day that Aatrox is available, Darian goes for it. And we're like, oh, wow, yeah, he's going for it. Lissandra ended up being huge when she finally came around. Europe has run her so many times. So. You know, again, I don't think it's really Heimerdinger here, but I'll talk about the Fnatic 2 picks here because they now have really, really good hard engage, and all their lanes are quite strong for ganks. Uh, 
Elise, I keep getting the names wrong, Elise is a very good early game jungler. This is something that's so strong. If you can do a lot of early game damage against Gambit, Whoa. that's cool. There we go. Galio's back. This is one of his old guard champions, but I want to finish my thought of Fnatic real quick. Um, Elise has so many good early game ganks here. She can set up um, she can set up with the, the Kennen, she can set up with the Lissandra, she can even set up for Sona Varus. All those lanes are gankable. So, interesting setup. I'm waiting to see which way Fnatic are going to switch these lanes. Peke, of course, went massive yesterday on Lissandra, so he could be staying on this champion, but we have seen Soaz running it as well. Kennen, of course, is another champion that both of them play, so wait to see, of course, the time is going to tick down for a long time. But what do we see from the Fnatic side here? Because there's a lot of area effect, a lot of CC as well as Gambit. This is actually both teams are going to clash pretty hard. This is really interesting because both teams only have the one node, which is all in. Fnatic mm. has a little bit more poke. But I want to talk about one specific interaction that's really scary here on Ga um, for Gambit fans out here. So Soaz, generally speaking, can start his ultimate. Um, and then dive in. So he, the taunt from Alex Sitch's Galio won't stop him from ulting it. Will, however, probably stop him from using Zonia's. However, even while taunted, Slicing Maelstrom will still go out and shoot out some damage, and Soaz on Kennen is likely to stun Alex out of his Idol of Durand, is likely to stop the channel on the Galio ultimate early and, and free his team from taunting. However, while that is still going on, you've got the Misfortune bullet time coming through. You've got free time for Darian and Aatrox to go mental. The entire uh, team from Fnatic is likely to hit by Evelyn's ultimate as well. So there's an obvious sort of press R wombo combo on both sides. And it just kind of depends on how really will Alex get stunned, how crazy can Darian and Pushu go, and then how much damage is Genji's bullet time deal. We shall see, because this game has definitely got some interesting picks in it, that's for sure. And you got excited about the fact that you wanted Diamond for the CC. You wanted to see this coming out from them, and it seems that Gambit wanted it themselves as well. Both these teams fighting to stay up the top of the ladder. Gambit currently are sat in bat position at 10 and 7. Fnatic, if they win here, will actually tie with Gambit. They'll both be on 10 and 8. So Gambit... The pressure is on them. Fnatic just trying to stay in toast. Fnatic, of course, were the spring season number one team. They won the playoffs as well. So they managed to beat out Gambit both times. And historically, so far in the LCS, Gambit have been the worse off against Fnatic. It's looking like Genja's going to have to use that strut passive of Misfortune to get out of there already. Mm -hmm. So they do know that Fnatic are all stacked in this top lane. And that's really convenient for him, using the champion who runs faster than anyone else to scout out one of those pressures and see where Fnatic goes. They've stymied one of the big aggression paths here for Fnatic. They've only got one minute left now to get to a buff before it spawns. And their, their top lane push just got stopped. If they go towards the bottom, there's already wards in place here for Gambit. Fnatic are not likely to succeed with an invade at this point. Ooh, Fnatic are going as one still, though, heading down towards the bottom lane. We do see Fnatic, are they going to go towards it? They just showed themselves on that ward, so they know exactly where they are, but they're all still stacked. They have no vision down this bottom lane, so they have no idea where the Gambit have gone for full invade themselves. Well, we'll see, and that's kind of the issue when Fnatic goes for that sort of hardcore stack on one side and gets spotted out. They lose all the ward coverage they were looking for, and and this means that they have to be the defensive team. They put a defensive ward down on their red buff. You're seeing Soaz actually is throwing shurikens randomly around because he doesn't know if people are lurking around in his jungle because of that darkness. And it's like, is someone there? No, okay, I can go to the bottom lane. But look at what Fnatic are doing, though. They're actually, they, because they saw uh, Genja run to the top lane, they expect him to stay there and want to fight that 2v2. Yeah, they are taking Pushu and Yellowstar up there. It seems it will be a 2v2 setup, which means, of course, it will be Soaz up against Darien in that bottom lane. Diamond's going to be starting at blue. We also saw Cyanide starting at his own blue. So mirror match for both junglers. Seems like they're going to take the same routes at the opposite ends of the jungle. We do see Darien on Aatrox. We've seen him on this before. They did take victory last time he was on it. Where do you stand on this as a lineup? Actually, it's all a lie because the Yellow Star is going to get hooked in very much aggressive from Darker straight away, putting the Ignite down on towards him and taking a lot of damage off Yellow Star early on. They want to keep the pressure on towards him, but Pushu wasn't too worried about that. As long as he doesn't take another arrow or another hook for a while, he's got another health potion and the biscuit to get back to full. So Fnatic are still okay in this lane and they will keep trying to poke out. It's just up to how well sustained can Darien, or sorry, can Darker be before the junglers start messing around with this lane. We will see, and speaking of junglers messing around with the lane, Diamond already up here. 
going to try and sneak his way and he's going to get no he's not going to get spotted because he stealthed up just in the right time before those minions came around Yellowstone has actually gone a long way away from this one they might quickly go aggressive on Pushu Diamond's already got himself in that second layer of bushes stacked up with the double buff this could be very much early aggression Darker coming out maybe forcing them back they need a hook or a flash play though because they can't just force the kill without burning something there goes the hook and it lands the hook lands straight in there there's the play Pushu has to flash away from this one is it going to be enough damage one more shot yes it will be Genja picks up first blood so there we go the skill shots land here from darker and that is huge getting the cc makes the evelyn ganks work great job there by gambit so back to this bottom lane we can see darian actually very low getting stunned out there already by so has putting some serious punishment on him already starting to develop a cs lead how do we look towards this lane because it's not a lane we've seen a great deal of in the lcs we've only seen so far aatrox played once and it was by darian they did win out that lane but this time again, it's up against Soaz, the effectively number one top laner. Yeah, so of course you can see a 23 to 10 minion kill lead because right now Darian can't really deal with a ranged matchup. This is one of Kennen's strengths, is bullying melee champions out. Darian can try to auto attack and sustain back up, but the problem is he's still against a ranged champion who does out DPS his sustain. Whenever Soaz lets up though, it is very easy for Darian to top back off. Of course, you can see this lane in the moment in that top is being bullied because there's no flash or barrier available for push you anymore so expect to see darker and genji being much more aggressive diamond has snuck himself in towards his bottom lane though kennan of soaz has just returned he's got himself a second doran's blade so expect to see maybe he's going to go a little bit more aggressive he isn't got, hasn't got anything to check slow. towards that may well get spotted out here he's going to dive in they're going to catch on towards him is it enough damage though no it's not so as just quickly lightning surges away and you can see he's got a 75 percent win rate but he has been bullied out of his turret now by now for darian and diamond and because of the blood well he's got enough tankiness to dive the turret which means so as has to sit towards the back wait for a minion wave to just produce enough damage to tank through the turret line and then he'll be okay especially with Sinai waiting to counter gank thing is they won't dive at this point and Cyanide's actually waiting off in the wings. He's not showing himself. So they actually want, it seems, Darian or Diamond to put some pressure down. We saw Teleport just use that from Alex. Something we didn't actually touch on, the fact that both mid laners do have Teleport. And this is interesting that Alex actually chose to waste that Teleport now just to keep up in his lane right here. He doesn't expect any hardcore ganks in from Cyanide that he needs to counter gank because Alex will hit six soon. And then Idol of Durand plus Teleport is such a good counter gank tool. The fact that that is down can actually be a little bit dangerous for Gambit. Yeah, and Peke, he took a long time to get going on the Sandra last time around, but once he got going, boy, did he get going. I think he ended up with the 817, I believe it was, you said, the stats in the opening show. Very much a strong performance on his uh, first Lysandra. And you can see it's got a very strong win ratio as well, 81.3%. Yes. No surprises there. It was heavily used by Frontlord at the opening few weeks. And since then has been pretty much one of the main focuses in here in Europe. And look at the wards that just came out here. They pink warded the river, but not this brush. They do not know Diamond is here. Darker if he lands a hook can get another kill. Remember, Flash is down. Oh, the hook not quite landed on Yellowstar. Pushu this time going aggressive. Oh, Yellowstar might check just face check straight on towards him. He does go in there. He hasn't got the uh, hook back available. He'll be back in a moment. Can he get away from this one? Yes, he does. He flashes. The ignite is running. He should be safe, though. And this time, Gamma, don't be successful. Yeah, there's no summoner spell or no flash, I should say, up for Darker. If he could have flash played Yellowstar, it would have guaranteed them a kill. And you just saw, without any CC landing, how much damage they got to put down. Imagine what would have happened to Yellowstar if that hook landed. Thankful for Fnatic that he did dodge that. And I want to also point out, though, the gold right here. Actually, hold on, Peck is going to find Diamond. He's going to find him. Is he going to be able to catch on towards him? That claw of doom as he goes in. He will catch him down. He's going to get the chain of corruption. And no, tell lies, not chain of corruption. He has it at level six. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but he managed to get stunned up nicely. And Peke picks up that kill. Absolutely beautiful right there and dodges the hook. That's important as well. And he used the mechanics of Lissandra so well. That ice claw works like flash. If you hit it in the middle of a wall, you'll go to the nearest edge of the wall was only powered through the Baron pit but still popped out the other side cut off the retreat stunned him up easy kill Fnatic actually four man grouped up there we are seeing the teleport coming out from Peko so that's been used in full vision of Alex so he's going to know the timer on that it's got about 
half the time left on that, which is a 90 seconds about, think around about left on his timer, because it's 123 right 123 now. 123 seconds left on that timer, so keep your eyes peeled on when that's available and see whether Alex Hitch does go for any ganks. This bottom lane, though, so has big advantage continuing to be built here, despite the fact he got bullied out a little bit by Diamond. We do see them. Diamond actually taking the blue buff for himself again and heading down towards his bottom lane. I think he's just simply going to hold off the turret, though, while Darian goes back. I actually want to point out oh, something no. from Soaz, though. So, assuming he survives his gank, which might not happen, he's got a long sword against Gally, who's going to stack him. All right, never mind, he's getting ganked. He's going to go in. He's got a full life force as well. He has got his ultimate available. We can see Diamond trying to get on towards it. it has so has got enough to turn this one around. Oh. He goes aggressive. He gets Diamond down, but he pays for the life. Then now Darker in the top there. He gets caught out. Now Genja's going to be the focus target. Sign out switches. Lands the cocoon beautifully on towards him. Genja's in all sorts of trouble. He's going to get taken down just on the turret here. One more shot will do it. It is going to be another kill, and it's Sign that takes it so suddenly Fnatic get three kills and can we just get the one absolutely beautiful play right there the early ganks from Cyanide are so important for them and now Darren's getting flanked by Peke he's going for minions he's, he's going for minions instead didn't really fancy going straight diving in there of course, the teleport's still not available for Alex, but he had left that mid lane, so he was aware that possibly he could have had visitors. So now I want to talk about Soaz. Look at his build. Double Doran's Blade into uh, a Longsword, into what's going to be Blade of the Ruined King. Of course, Galio scales off of buying a bunch of magic resist, and he wants to just tank magic damage and be like, haha, I'm invincible to your double AP comp. Well, Soaz went for AD Cannon. He's attack damage cannon, so good luck being Galio against that. Awesome choice right there, so as you'd be like, oh, I'll just go attack damage runes and masteries and buy attack damage items. Ha ha! <laughs> Cars is straight against him. Big's happy with that one. And you may have noticed, by the way, Peke has switched lanes, though, it seems, and so has going in towards that mid lane. As you mentioned, attack damage going up against Alex Itch, and Alex is going to have to start stacking himself and defending. A little bit different from this one, but let's see whether it works out for him. Darian continuing to build that passive back up. Well, the timer on it. It's not available just yet, I don't think. Darian, though, taking a lot of Got damage. A while. Peke is just going to... I think they're going to change lanes again. Nope. He's just going to hang around and keep Darian guessing. He's Darian trying to with be, the blue wolf, remember, because he goes back jump across from, the uh, wall and jump Darian right here. He can all in it with no blood well. Let's see if he does that claw of doom. It's going to be ready. He's just lingering, waiting for him to step and basically take himself too far away from safety. There it is, surely. No Soaz. flash, no ignite available. Soaz comes in just at the right time. They lock him up. He comes around. It's almost certainly going to be a kill. Who's going to be the one that takes it? Alex is teleports in. Is it going to be enough, though? He can turn it back around here. He's going to get stunned up. Peke throws out a bit of damage. It's not going to be enough. Alex does back away from that one, but Darian went down to Soaz. Absolutely great play there. The blood well was still down, and so they knew they could hold on to this one. Peke already had a pink ward in that brush, so we knew no one could see him, and he said, Soaz, come down from the lane, waited until Soaz was in range range and then comboed out and because Lissandra can CC you for over two and a half seconds that was enough time to say look I'll, I'll keep him locked up that'll be enough time for you to come in from the fog of war and Alex is going to have a hard time defending this one Alex is going to get engaged upon it's going to be Peke that picks up the kill as well so has tanked out the turret beautifully there he will escape with his life Peke very low we do see Diamond actually collapsing in towards him and Darian though as it is has happened in the bottom line he's going to try and teleport back is he going to go by in time I don't oh! think he is no he gets taken down Darian comes in now Cyanide's in trouble he's going to try and repel fail flash repels away he's got nowhere to go he's just going to drop straight down and it's going to be Diamond that picks up the kill. That was absolutely massive there for Gambit. They got shut, well, a kind of minor shut down gold because he was only 2-0 and zero right there. But getting those two is huge. And now suddenly all that terrible laning that Darian had, being down in minions, getting picked on so much. He just picked up two kills. He's sitting on 1,000 gold right now and just left base. Well, Diamond, he's trying to solo the dragon out. I think he kind of needs a little bit of help here. I'm not too sure. My historical facts are not too strong, but I'm pretty sure Evelyn can't solo it just yet at level 8. And sure enough, he does does have to back away from that one because so has well he just bullied Darian away from that lane again and I want to point out one thing by Diamond actually this is, this is the second time I've seen him go Spirit Stone into Doran's ring and we normally see them go for the early Spirit of the Elder Lizard and we do still see that from Diamond but this is the only player I've seen oh goodbye Yellow Star oh he does throw out the crescendo is it going to be enough no teleport coming in though from Pekka he comes in Genja goes down Darko now in trouble there's no way escaping for this one it's going to be a kill and it's going to be a double for Pusher
shoot. That is massive for Fnatic. A 3-1-2. Varus now is going to make life easy for Fnatic towards the end game because he's going to scale really, really well. Soaz going to have a hard time killing Dan with the blood well, but he's always a threat. He's got ulti. It's going to turn that slice. He managed from down. Almost certainly going to force that blood well to go. He's just going to run away from that passive. Diamond Proc's going to try and get in. He's got his fists of fury ready. Can he catch on towards the backside of Soaz? Yes, he can. And it's a kill for Diamond. Yeah, Soaz unfortunately tried to all in on Darien, but didn't know Diamond was coming nearby, and so burned all of his cooldowns, a lot of his CC, the lightning rush and all of that, and then had no escape tools for a very fast running Evelyn who flashed after him. So good job there, Diamond, to realize, you know, they might just try to jump Darien, he's got no health. Good read. Well, BF Sword being picked up by both Darien and Genja, so Genja with that Standard triple Doran's blade. <laughs> but meanwhile, Pushu, he's got himself that bloodthirster already complete. We do see enter the dragon from Gambit. They're getting on towards it. Diamond Prox should be taking this one down. He has got that smite to secure it, and sure enough, he takes it. So there we go. And I want to point out another item build as well by Gambit. The triple Mercury treads early in the game by their jungler, their mid laner, and their top laner. They know that what Fnatic wants to do is lock them down in crowd control. Every single one of them has a stun or root. And most of them hit more than one target. These guys will be stunned in a team fight. And they say, look, we can get more damage, but I'd rather be stunned for 35% less time. That will let me do more damage and survive the fight. I'm looking across the board, Peke. He's starting to get rolling. This this could be a scary time for Gamut, of course, because Alex Edge has yet been able to put any presence on the map, honestly. We saw him teleport down to the bottom, but it was simply a case of defensive moves and then had to just back away. Well, Peke, he's been roaming around the map, picking up kills, picking up assists, and he's becoming a bit of a problem for Gambit. And he's rushing for the Zonia's Hourglass, which is going to make him so incredibly hard to deal with. We just saw in the Challenger Finals how difficult that was to deal with the Zonia's self ult Lissandra, and it's going to be the case here as well. Peke rushing for that item, can just get in the middle of the Gambit team, start out fights, and basically ignore counterattack, especially when you consider that he's going to ignore some of Galio's damage uh, and pretty much all of Genji's ultimate as well. And Fnatic are doing what they do best here. So as just off the side, he's going to get the stun on towards Darien. But he put the slicing Maelstrom down and forced him away. He doesn't have his blood well available just yet, so he would have been very vulnerable there. And immediately, so as took him down to half health. We can see the damage that he's already pulling out. That Blade of the Rune King not quite completed yet. Piercing arrow on towards Diamond. That did a fair bit of damage as well from Pushy with that Bloodthirst are now complete, and well, Fnatic are doing what they do best. They've got the split push going. Soez is causing all manner of problems for Darien. Yes, that is Soez just with a categorically good matchup here. We got to pick him late in the order, realize, yep, this is who I want to play here. It's a long range bully. It's going to be really fun for me. And got to pick that after revealing the Aatrox and knew that would be a good 1v1 for him. And has seeked him out for most of this game. Soez, for the, for I would say 80% of this game, has been against Darien in lane and is building a lead because of that. Now, you talked about the, uh, the Bloodthirster and the Piercing Arrow a second ago, I want to get on that as well, is because these two teams are so burst-based of, you know, get the AoE locked down and we'll clean up from there, both these AD carries are going for the sort of caster build, the early Bloodthirster to shoot out the Piercing Arrow or the Hail of Arrows or to shoot out the Bullet Time and then say, well, you're all at no health and we can clean up easily from that point on. Absolutely, trying to drill them down as much as possible. And Alex, it's going to be vital in trying to position that Idler Duran, trying to flash in. Get that ulti off and try and disrupt Pushu as much as possible. And maybe, just maybe, if he can lock up Soaz and Peke at the same time. But I'm not too sure. Of course, we did see yesterday a number of champions, especially on Evil Geniuses, they were clumped together. It was Frog yes. and, uh, Yellow and, and Yellow Pete were clumping together. You would assume that Fnatic are not going to fall for that. They would have seen that yesterday and thinking, that, that's what we've got to be careful of, guys. Once well, soon as that Galio got locked in, but Galio doesn't get played very often in the LCS, so the element of surprise could still be there. It really can be, because Gambit can actually flood into fights really, really well. Imagine if Darker lands a Q, tosses a lantern, and pulls Alex Itch into the team. You don't get to react to that. You just get taunted by the Galli ultimate, and it's going to be incredibly difficult for that to deal with. It's hard to produce that sort of setup, but if it happens, there's not much counterplay. Yeah, funnily enough, I actually did mention the whole Syndra and uh, Thresh thing going yeah. on. And, uh, and they were like, yeah, that's great, but how do, you actually, do how do you actually get that to work in a fight? It's like... With a Galio. Yeah. <laughs> Syndra, Galio, Thresh, it's the new combo. You can put Launch Galio in. anywhere you want. <laughs> Not ever going to happen.
It would be a very well orchestrated fight. So honestly. look you, I'm sorry. Highly, uh, highlight reels for the rest of the, uh, <laughs> the year, I think, would be from that one. It would be move of the year that we sometimes see from uh, various fights. Fight of the year. But in this case, it is going to be Soaz backing off. He's going to get himself some more items. Play the Rune King has been completed by him. Cyanide as well. He's going for that AP champion, effectively, with the Haunting Guys and Sorcerer's Boots in there. He's got that magic pen. He needs to just build himself up some more damage. And that's going to be the case here. It's now time for the teams to explode outwards in terms of damage output. Mercury Trides and those who wanted it are done. Uh-oh, Soaz. Soaz getting baited into it by Darker there. Pulls out a slicing Maelstrom. Is it going to be enough to turn it around? He does get Darker down. Can he lightning surge away from this one? Flashes out. Diamond, though, flashes back in. Does manage to catch on towards him. Speaking of the idler, Duran wasn't quite able to post it down there. Pake turns around. Alex, it just drops like a stone. And now Diamond getting focused on Cyanide. He's going to have Cocoon back available in a moment. He used it very early on. There it is. Lands on towards Diamond. Piercing arrow not quite long enough to reach on towards him. The little spiders are going to do their work here, and they're just chomping down the heels of Diamond Brox. And sure enough, Peke picks himself up yet another kill. Great play right there. And unfortunately for Alex Itch, he's just biting off a little bit more than he can chew every time. He's getting just, they're jumping on him so fast. Fnatic are immediately turning over and saying, Alex, we have to get rid of your health bar fast so you don't ult us out. We've seen actually twice now him get assaulted on and then be too afraid to ult himself. I actually want to look at Alex's skill order because he is leaving Bullard to only one point, so it's only 30 armor MR. He's relying on the Q and E to wave through. He's got a good minion kill result, uh, good minion kills because of it, but he has not a lot of tankiness, so Fnatic can burst him out for the next two levels. And then Alex is going to start getting tanky with Bulwark. Then it gets a little bit more difficult for Vinak to kill him off. Well, Peke is going aggressive here on Darian. Darian trying to force himself to get away from that one. So as, of course, was coming in from behind. And this time he does escape. Peke, though, at 4-1-3. Went big yesterday. So as joining him as well. This time around is 3-3-1, three, three, though. Picked himself up three kills. The supports, let's talk about those. Yellow Star, of course, one of the newest supports. He's already got that Ruby Sidestone completed with the boots. Neither supports Ooh. have gone for those uh, GP10 items. And Darker, well, Darker's been caught out a couple of times already. And actually right here, Diamond accidentally stole the blue buff. It will help him actually clear the dragon a bit faster than if Alex Bitch had it. But as far as the next team fight, within the next three minutes, it's actually going to be a little bit worse for Gambit just because of the lower cooldowns on Alex. Though, the Dragon pickup, really, really good for them. The uh, Pink Ward's coming down, as well as, uh, I mean, really just the vision control is, is so good for them here. So Gambit do keep themselves in in terms of gold. You can see once the second dragon they've taken, it is just 2,000 gold between the two teams. Not too big. 11-7 in kills is certainly a higher kill ratio than maybe you sometimes seek from the LCS games. Of course, though, the saying that, we saw some pretty mental matches at the end of the day yesterday with uh, around about, I think it was, I think I worked it out, it was 96 kills between the two games that yourself Jeez. and Joe covered in those two matches. It was pretty wild. But as it stands, it's Fnatic slightly in the driving seat with a two tower advantage mm -hmm. and that little gold advantage. This middle tour is not long with the world either. I feel that once Pushu gets back here, they could take this. Unless uh, Alice can get there in time to defend it because the wave clear, they don't even need minions, screw it, back door in it. They realized that Gambit still did not show anyone up yet and they said, all right, we can face tank this, Darien's alone. And I've got to commend, though, as you mentioned, the two turret kill lead for Fnatic. They've done a very good job of defending turrets always. They've been in a 2v2 lane and a 1v1 lane, so there's never been like this lopsided 2 on one where the turret falls down when a jungler shows up. And they've always responded well to Alex's split pushing or to Darien's split pushing that Fnatic have kind of repeatedly been drawn back into the laning phase, but then still gotten to get in there for team fights. They've been able to deal with these, these split pushes and lane against them, and then still make things happen. It's a really good play. So we'll see how it works out between the AD carries as well, because Genja is finally off in a separate lane on his own, which he likes to do quite often, which is honestly what the AD carries technically should be doing. But Pushu, he's more involved. And he's been with his team. You can see he's got the kills. 3-1-3. Piercing arrow landing on Darien. Just has to make the point. And he is always sticking around with the rest of his team. He's not going off solo missions. He is sticking around with them. Which Genja yesterday certainly fell f foul off. He was pretty much not involved for a good half an hour of that game. Yes, and that's kind of what happens though. It's Genja's play style. He's this sort of like sniper, long range, play with the team AD carry. And... You know, he didn't get ganked, he didn't die in lane, and when he's on the losing team, he doesn't have much of an impact. He's not one of the players uh, like you sort of see with Reckless, who tries to make all the openings and jump in and start fights out. 
But Diamond is the one that he's looking for a gank right here. Diamond coming around the backside, teleport gonna come in. That's Alex Izzy will be joining the party. Comes straight in. Oh, gets crescendo, locked up straight away. Peke just off the side as well. He is a bit of a big boss right now. Can he take him down? Pulls out the Zonis. I've got slicing mares from on towards Darren. He's gonna get forced into the blood well. Will it be quick enough? Peke does go down to Genja. As I mentioned, he does come back in towards it. Alex Ix has still got flash and ulti available. Hasn't used SLR, he just used it a minute ago. Yeah. So ignore what I'm talking about. It's complete rubbish, and it's a one for zero to Gambit. And they have map control to take down a turret as well. Dragon's dead, they've picked that one up, so this middle turret is likely to be theirs unless Fnatic can wave clear very, very well. And that's the forced engage that Gambit can pull out. Evelyn ult into a teleporting Galio. They forced the Crescendo to only land a one champion, but Soaz, he's looking a little bit antsy. They might go for this. They do manage to take the tower down though, Gambit. That's the first one of the game, but Pushu continuing to keep pressure on. He wants to wind up that piercing arrow, maybe get some damage down. The rest of the team are closing in. You can see Soaz Pincer move from that side, and Cyanide continues to keep the pressure on. That spider not going to find its home, though. The Darker will back off. So, Gambit, while they've all backed off, we see Fnatic, they're all getting in position. They may well try and take something from this while Gambit all back away. This is the hallmark of a good team that even though they lost a, a couple champions there and Pucci doesn't have much mana, they don't have many ultimates, they still know that they can fight very well and they know that the catch potential of Gambit is now mostly gone. So they can keep the lanes pushed, they can keep the vision in their favor, they can make sure they know exactly what Gambit's going for, maybe do a little bit of counter jungling and get, again, the lanes pushed out and keep vision control that way and that's Fnatic knowing what they can get away with and continuing to be aggressive because they are still the team with a thousand gold lead and they've got a big window where Alex Itch still has 52 seconds on his ultimate. And they have good ward coverage around that blue buff as well. They just lost the two pawns that they had in there. We do see Yellow Star coming out, just getting a ward back down that river. Peke's just pushed that top lane. Three members of Gambit are going up to deal with that one. While Fnatic, they were just getting in position to come around that mid lane. So Gambit at the moment having to be reactive rather than proactive against Fnatic. They're trying to keep them up bait. Darian did use his passive in that last fight as well. So it's the only reason it went to a 1-1. One -one. Sinai putting that pink ward down. He will clear out. This is actually Baron coverage maybe they're going to start doing. And one thing I like also about what uh, what Darian's doing is he went after one item into Aegis. This was actually a weakness we saw from uh, from Copenhagen Wolves when they ran Evelyn Jungle, is the Aegis came out so late from them because their Shen, their top laner, spent a lot of time buying for himself and then transitioning out. Darian here has already gone Bloodthirster into Runic Bulwark by 24 minutes. 24 minute Runic Bulwark is actually faster than you see it from a lot of junglers. So by splitting the burden, by making sure Darian picks it up pretty quickly, they allow their teammate to be very strong. Well, Soaz goes engaging on towards Alex Teach, puts the slicing Maelstrom out. Is it going to be enough to slow him down? Alex is dropping very heavily here, forced to flash away from that one. That's going to take it away from his team fight potential for a period of time that that is down now. So that was a very good engagement from Soaz. That's really, really good from Soaz there. Good reflexes by Alex to put the bulwark on to himself. Uh, the W that, that you know blocks a bunch of damage by giving armor and MR. It, it helped them sustain through Soaz's ultimate. And again, this is still an attack damage. So he's actually building towards an Infinity Edge, so he's going to be putting out damage you don't expect from a cannon, though. You saw his follow-up after the ulti was still so high, forcing that flash out of Alex, forcing him to run away, even though he's got Sunfire Cape, because Soaz will put out very good DPS. Well, it will be the return of the Dragon, and Fnatic are ready for this one. Diamond Prox is going to come around. He has taken the last two, so he wants it, and I don't think he's going to get it, or will he? Because the rest of Gambit have come around and Fnatic stepped away. Peke, of course, off in that top lane. Has got teleport available, should they go for it. It's interesting because while there's no flash for Alex Itch, there's no ultimate for Soaz. Theoretically, the team fight would be a bit stronger for Gambit. Problem is, they're actually far away. If Fnatic had forced the issue, there would have been no Alex Itch and no Diamond, but because they didn't have much vision and because they didn't have, uh, you know, the the presence of mind to be like, well, we're down at ultimate, this is scary. They let it go, and that's a good pickup for Gambit. And while it was a 2,000 gold advantage for Fnatic at one point, you can see that's already shrunk down to around about 500 gold. Darker now with those pink wards. The pink battle has begun in that bush, it seems, because that's the second one we've seen going down there. Gambit keeping control of their own jungle and have kept control of that dragon. That was their third one of the game. There's an interesting trade-off here, though, because Yellow Star has actually the Oracle's Elixir on himself. So he should theoretically be more efficient at sweeping out wards if he doesn't have to spend too much more money uh, and can sort of just accrue a little bit off of killing the wards out himself. Whereas now Darker has picked up his own. He'd been using Pinkworth before that, and he's actually got a bit of an item lead as well, thanks to picking up a kill, thanks to the extra little bit of Dragon Control. He's 200 gold richer 
uh, than Yellow Star is. So now the pink, the, the ward work gets even more interesting because wards are even easier to kill. Absolutely. And Peke, this, this is what Fnatic do so well. Whether it be Peke or Soaz, they'll always keep on split pushing. They'll always keep pressure in one of the lanes that your opposition, they have to deal with it. And the teams that have managed to figure out and beat Fnatic are the ones that have sort of been veterans at this and dealt with it for a long time. Diamond again was trying to sneak around the side there. He's forced to back away. Fnatic didn't want to fall for this one. And it seems now they're happy to follow up the push and pressure that Peke has put him in that top lane. Well, they've got positional advantage over this top turret. Alex Lich can maybe wave clear, but Fnatic will beat to this turret before the rest of Gambit is. They could potentially run this down, but they risk the uh, the ulti out from Galio. Cyanide's hanging around the side there. Does get the cocoon down on Genjira. Throws down a bit of damage as well. The rest of Fnatic react to that one. Of course, with Soaz going AD as well. Double AD on those turrets will be burning them down very quickly. They'll get absolutely evaporated, so that is something that Gambit has to consider, that the split push threats are incredibly strong. Peke, he's got teleport, he's got a lot of ability power by going death cap Zonia's hourglass, so it's difficult to deal with, and he might go in here. They, they, we're going to say they're not backing up from this one, they're going to go in, slice him, Maelstrom, oh, instantly interrupted. Alex Hitch doesn't manage to catch his ultimate down, Darien does slam himself down there, his blood well is available, he's going to come back, but the rest of the team going to try and help him out there. Bullet time comes out from Genja, oh, takes Fnatic very, very low. Diamond tries to flash in crescendo instantly from Yellowstar, that was all the mana he had though. Is he going to have enough to escape here? So is he's trying to back off, but he's in the bush, he's going to go, nobody's checking the push. Oh, so is makes it out, and that's what Naruto Adosha had done a few uh, hours back. Decided to run instead of recalling, so the one for nothing. They got the cancel on Alexich. His ulti is down for a good amount of time. That's a nice window for Fnatic, but they need some health. Peke picked up home guard, and he's, he's teleporting. He's teleporting because he believes that they were going for Baron. He was a little bit worried about that. We already saw Pushu hanging around. Darko might get caught out here. He has got the Oracle available. Diamond not really in range to help him out. You can see he's just off the side. The rest of Gambit are going to react. Soaz coming in as well. There's a hell of a lot of damage on towards Diamond. He does manage to hook onto Soaz. Soaz tries to get away. There's the teleport from Alex Hitch. Is he going to have enough to close down on Peke? Sure as damn it, he will. And that is going to be Gambit picking themselves up another kill. Peke goes down. Good teleport in by Alex, helping that one get turned around. Fnatic bought off a little bit more than they could chew. Couldn't quite have the damage they needed. Peke just now got his ulti back up from cooldown. And unfortunately, he found the, the high health darker and not the low health diamond. So it's not that easy to burst down a support who's got about 650 health worth of items. It is a real game of death right now between these two teams. They are setting themselves up. 3-1 into it, 12-9 in kills, and honestly, you couldn't split it in team fights. It's just 300 gold between them now. Gamut clawed the way right back into this one with all those dragons. They continually pe keep picking up. They always have very good timers on it. The blue buff themselves, so once they can, Gamut have full control of their jungle, and honestly, they're actually starting to ward in towards Fnatic's. This is really Gamut feeling a little bit more comfortable right now, that even though they've lost uh, control of turrets, generally speaking, they've lost uh, more ganks early on. Because they've fueled so much gold from the dragon kills, they've been able to hold up into the game, and then because they've controlled the jungle so well, they kind of feel more comfortable running around the map. Dragon is kind of the thing that you see as a team that's more comfortable in their own skin, running around and making plays, and that's Gambit right here. And especially when you consider that Alex Itch now with the uh, distortion enchant on his boots will lower the cooldown of both his flash and his teleport, so he can keep opening up these fights, can keep making these engagements and surprising Fnatic. Mm, Fnatic are doing a fantastic job of keeping these outer turrets defended. Every single time some little push comes out there, you can see the bottom and top turret still managed to remain Almost 100% healthy as well. They've not even come close. Darker, though, has picked himself up his Oracle. And he's continuing to clear out those wards. And in terms of Bower and Vision, it's Gambit that have the better at the moment. Fnatic really don't have... Well, they have one ward at the moment on the map, which is down in that bottom dry bush. And Yellow Star's without his oracles right now. He bought Boots of Mobility instead of buying up another oracles. He doesn't have a lot of money because his team hasn't picked up globals or team fight wins in a while. And those are really the main sources of support gold income. Now that most competitive supports don't run GP10 quints, and uh, they haven't really been picking up many uh, Philosopher Stones either, so he can't afford to constantly oracles, and he's been forced to go pink ward, which Darker just keeps clearing out. 
Well, down the bottom, we're seeing Soas going aggressive on towards Alexic. Pushu is just off the side. Chain of Corruption does land. Alexic is going to surely go down. Yes, he does. Pushu picks up the kill. The rest of Gambit came round to try and collapse in towards him, but they have to back away. Cyanide comes in towards the bush, catches a glimpse of they the rest of this. Gambit. They could keep on pushing here. Fnatic have positional advantage. The Claw of Doom comes across, and Diamond just to use his ultimate try and jump across there, escape out of the way. Peke almost locked him up. And they're going to probably get the turf for this one as well. There's still no uh, Alex Itch for another 30 seconds. No flash, no TP. Has his ulti though, which means he will be a little scary later on. But there's finally some global gold for Fnatic, as well as the kill picked up, which they need. Yellowstar needs to get ward control back, because if they can't spot out Diamond, if they can't spot Alex that's jumping over a wall, or Darker hooking someone out, and this dragon is so important as well, now that Freaking Yellowstar can pick up an Oracles again. This is really big for Fnatic. Yeah, that was the first dragon of the game for Fnatic as well. Peke defending off that mid lane. As you mentioned, that will give him a good chunk of gold. And sure enough, there is the Oracle popping into place. It gives them a two and a half thousand gold lead back over Gambit. They had that lead at one point. They let it slip. This time around, though, Gambit, can they hold on to it? Or will Gambit manage to get back into the game once again? Well, there's an interesting thing that's going to hold Gambit down now is Cyan has finally finished what he considered his main build. Sork shoot haunting guys, Spirit of the Ancient Golem is now going for the utility items, right? Because Cyanide went early damage, but Soaz needed some too. No one had the Aegis Burden. No one could have bought that. Now it's finally here for Fnatic. Now in a team fight, they'll do a little bit better surviving Diamond and Alex's burst. And as soon as Runic, Runic Bulwark comes through as well, when you look at this build, there's no magic pen, no percent magic pen from these casters. So that's going to be a huge pickup. And Soaz as well has almost got that last Whisper completed, chasing it down. Or will he go Phantom Dancer, actually? He could go Phantom Dancer first. Who knows? With that pickaxe in there and the zeal. But Yellowstar, with that Oracle that he's just picked up, just acquired, does clear out the Baron Buff wards. Peke defending off, saying, we want a ward in this tri-bush. Yellowstar saying, I can do that. I can go one better. I think I'm going to try and squeeze one further up the lane. They waited to see if Genja's going to go for this, because Peke will dive on him. And Genja's like, mm, spider senses are tingling. I'm backing away from this one. Genja's very good at knowing when ganks are coming his way. That's why he has so few deaths in games where his team is losing. That's why he had that 0-1-1 uh, Varus game just yesterday, because yes. He knew when things were coming. He could back out very successfully. Unfortunately, he couldn't get involved in the team fights because they were so hard to, to battle in general. But Diamond, he's actually running into Yellowstar. Yellowstar, I don't think he actually saw them because the Oracle's detection is actually pretty small. Yeah, I don't think he spotted them out there. Put a ward a little further up the lane now because he's aware that somebody's coming. It is Alex Itch that's gone up the lane, actually. Peke is right next to him. But just in that jungle area, around the back of the Baron Pit, Darker is like, mm, I want this ward, but I could do with a little bit of protection here. I don't feel too confident in that. And he does manage to clear it out still. Lingering in the death push, Gambit want to get some wards in this back of the Baron Pit, but they're almost certain that Fnatic are there. Yeah, you can see that's Darian starts it off, makes the Baron attack, so as. Yeah, and that's one of the best ways to get a team to not camp in the Baron Pit. Just aggro it from across the wall and back off. Fnatic won't sit there and hold it, so he gets to sort of build a little bit of protection that way and let him ward that. But that little curved brush you just saw Darker sweep out, that's Thresh's favorite brush. You can hook that from across in the Baron Pit, you can hook it from over in the red buff, and anytime a support has to face check that and sweep that ward out, you give the option to collapse on them and every once in a while you see a game turn because of a ward in that brush. And Fnatic are thinking we don't want to play this tactical dance just yet. Peke cleared out the top wave to keep it pushing. Keeping somebody busy in that top lane. He's thinking I could take Diamond down actually. Let's have a look around these golems. Oh, he's getting collapsed on towards Darian coming around. He has got vision in this one. Pushu is just off the side there. Cyanide had actually started the Baron off. The Baron down to half health, by the way. They are going to have to back away from this one. Darian just off the side. He stood on top of a ward. They're going to see if they can land that piercing arrow. They do manage to get that damage down home. Darian no actually well. got no blood well built up at all. Does have to jump away in towards the golems. Peke is going to follow it through. He's going to drop him down. Is it going to be enough? The Zonia's hourglass comes out. Will he manage to get back in there? Crescendo comes back on towards him. We see Pushu coming around. He takes down Darker. That's going to get a second. That's going to be Darian going down. Bullet time. Just about defending off the rest of Garen. Gambit. But Alex is taking very low. That bullet. Oh, the piercing arrow nearly landed. Diamond getting caught by the hail of arrows. He has to back away. And Fnatic once again coming out on top. It was a two for one trade, though. Peke went down. And Soas was dropped incredibly low. But because he's AD Cannon, he has lifesteal in his build. Went back to full health by chucking down the top wave. They could go for Baron. They've got 280 carries. 
They may well do that. They're going to come around the side. Is there a ward in there? There is one at the back, which Yellowstar will be able to spot out. But you can see the fact that Soaz and Pushu were in there. They'd already taken it pretty low before that exchange began with Cyanide tanking it out. Cyanide will be making his way back. You can see him coming across the mini-map right now. So they will have Smite available. But Diamond, Diamond doesn't have flash. is also closing in. But yeah, as you mentioned, doesn't have flash. And he's going to have to really hot-foot it in those stilettos to try and get in there. Not going to happen. It's going to be Fnatic's Baron. That was awesome by Fnatic right there. They had pink wards on both walking entrances towards the Baron pit. If you come from the top, we'll see you. If you come from the bottom, we'll see you. And we know your flash is down because you used it in that fight. He said, there's no way Diamond steals this unless Darker hooks Lanterns over. And we'll see that coming too because there's ward coverage on the other side of the wall. So even though Cyanide didn't even make it into the Baron pit before it went down or did at the very end right there, they had the control. They knew they had the control to take that one down. No worries about Smite. That means there's a 5,000 gold lead almost building up here for Fnatic. But more importantly, with that Baron, Gambit are facing a aggressive Fnatic here. They're looking to go aggressive straight away on towards Alex Ditch in the bottom lane. Alan, it's Peke that goes in there. Tries to pop himself down. Ultimate comes oh. out. Peke just drops him. Soaz comes in with the finishing blow. And as you start outscaling a Galio, especially when Peke has a Void Staff completed, you can't defend against all this damage. Alex went for a Death Cap to try to actually deal damage and get his team snowballed ahead. He doesn't have that anymore. He simply has to uh, you know, he, he built damage, he's not very tanky, you can explode that man, and we've seen that time and again in this game. And it looks like Fnatic are going to rotate around, put some damage actually, so I was tanking the turret a little bit, throwing some shurikens on towards that inhibitor turret. The whole five members of Fnatic now coming around towards this inhibitor turret. Can they force it down though? Can they siege down Gambit? They often hold out these turrets very well, but already, look at the, how much damage has gone on that turret. It's gone already. Cocoon lands on Diamond. Piercing Arrow follows it through, and he just gets dropped. We see the bullet time doing work there, but Darker gets straight taken down. He tried to hook himself in and throw the box down, but he wasn't enough. Fnatic just have a lot of damage right now. But they've got to run away from Alex Edge. They know it's so scary to have a Galio jump on you and pull your whole team in, because when you've got two to three members below half HP, a death cap Galio will wipe them off the map. So Fnatic very safely run back. They're waiting for Yellowstar to heal them up. They're waiting for lifesteal from Soas and Pushu. And now they can consider going back in. But even still, they, they can just play the measured aggression. They can take the free dragon. Soas a little overstended, but he's going to be okay, I think. He should just about get away from that one. While the Cyanide takes the dragon out, Pushu's going to come around and help him out. And they will secure their second dragon of the game. And again, that gold lead, it continues to stretch. All this global gold, all this global experience is starting to be collected now by the Fnatic. They're 5-1 up in turrets, and now it's 2-3 in dragons. They've played so amazingly here, controlling their lanes almost the entire game. Uh, and it's, it's so good by them that even though they're not often hardcore engaging under turrets, because they're strangling all the options from Gambit, because they're... Uh, he's saying you can't push top, you can't push bottom, you can't dive in here, you can't dive in there, removing all the openings. Fnatic has to fight on their terms because Gambit doesn't force the, they can't force the issue. And from my experience, it's, I, I don't like Alexic on these sort of champions. I like him on full out aggressive champions like Peke's on right now. He can be the man that sets up the kills, starts things off because generally they read the game so well. These mid laners, they are killers, mm -hmm. Peke and and Alex. Alex isn't really a man to just play the team game and help set up a kill. He has to be the one that starts it all off, which technically he is, but yeah, Fnatic are just bullying him down every time he comes close. Exactly. If Alex weren't behind this game, if he you know, hadn't maybe burned teleport at like level uh, level five and been unable to counter gank. Normally, that is a playmaking champion. This is one of his old great champions from season two. Actually, he used to mm. run it a lot, yeah. and it was very effective. It was very effective on Galley. He could bully out his lane. He could shove it constantly, and make plays with teleport ganks. Unfortunately, he never found them. It's been on cooldown half the game, and then when he does show up, he gets bursted out. And he manages to go, and so as is there. <laughs> the standard seems to be how it's working. The final inner turret of the game for Fnatic. They are going to come around. Those turrets are dropping incredibly quickly with Pushu and Soaz, both being heavy, heavy AD hitters right now. And honestly, that every member of Fnatic can actually hit from range, so nobody has to be in melee range to try and take that down. So the exposed inhibitor seems to be the next target for Fnatic. And Gambit, they're really unsure of how to defend this one. And they're not going to be able to. The inhibitor, you have to give it up. When you're behind like that and the turret's already gone, you can't fight with a 9,000 gold deficit unless you get a miracle initiation. 
that Miracle team fight could still exist here for Gambit. Remember, there's really only one true tank here on Fnatic. If they manage to actually catch Peke and Soaz in the Galio ult without it being cancelled early on by slicing Maelstrom, they could just explode them. The problem is they've not found that situation, especially when they get poked out like that from Pushu. And I think they're trying to bait out Darker to say, come on, hook one of us, hook one of us, you know you want to do it. Instead, it could be the Chain of Corruption lands in there, Darian tries to launch himself in. Alex is not there, he was at the base, he's back on the fountain, he's teleporting out right now. Finally, he's going to join the fight, but again, he's too late to the party, and Fnatic they just simply hadn't invited him, they're going to back away. And they are going to be forced away, and Diamond's going to find Peke, force the Zonia, he's gone. Zonia comes out, yeah, oh, he's going to try and flash away, it turns oh back God. around on Diamond! But this time he is going to get picked up, the heal wasn't quite enough. Genja comes in, but now he's in trouble, Guardian Angel gets popped there. So as can he get the last hit? No, because there's Isla the Duran. Alex H finally gets himself a kill on the board. It's 19-13, it's still not over with. And there you go, there's the miracle fight they needed, Diamond just beelined for Pushu and got rid of him immediately. The bullet time came across and kept the rest of Fnatic from doing anything. Dropped their health bars so low. Yeah, Alex was late to the party, but he showed up when it counted and got the cleanups there. That was huge for Gambit. So Gambit with an inhibitor down are continuing to keep on pushing through this mid lane. Still three members of Fnatic down. I'm not too sure whether Gambit have it in them to take the inhibitor down. They will back away from this one, but they are not done and dusted yet. That engage wasn't the cleanest, wasn't the greatest, but still they got kills. Alex wasn't even there for the start of that fight. It's because they can dive in and not be punished doing it. Darian Dovin also helped kill off Pushu, lost his blood well for it. But when you consider the Fnatic lineup being pretty bursty early on and then relying on AD carries to clean up, well, one of the AD carries got dropped immediately. That was Pushu. He got killed off, so he can't kill off Darian after the blood well ends. Uh, you look what happened to Peke. He got pretty much isolated out. was forced to zone his away. Diamond picked up at the end right there. Soaz can't fight without a tank line in front of him. He had to run away from that one. If no one's left, to kill off Darian, he can be that second guy in, take a bunch of damage and say, that wasn't a kill, I don't care. And Peke, we see him picking up that Guardian Angels this time around, so he's going to relive and revive for the fight once again. Genji's GA did actually get burnt in that last fight as well, so it's important to note that cooldown is going to be off for a while. Darian didn't get touched, so I don't believe, so his blood well will be back available. Baron's going to be up in four seconds. Gamut and not in any way shape or form ready to fight for this. And Fnatic have total ward control of it as well, and that's just the... that's reaping what they have sown this game. They've taken control. Okay, that push in the mid lane didn't quite work. Gamut got a good turnaround, but Gamut didn't take ward control off of that one. They didn't go and, and get wards everywhere and sweep everything away. Yellowstar got to rebuy and Oracles. The wards were down in the jungle anyway. They get that one for free because Gambit, unfortunately, went for a push instead of for vision control, and so the, uh, the Baron was available. So Fnatic now with that Baron. Peke pushing the top wave along. Remember, there's super minions coming in the bottom lane. And Fnatic, four members in this mid turret. And there's not a great deal of hit points left on that inhibitor. It will go down very quickly. Peke free hitting that top turret. Somebody's going to have to deal with it. Gen just having to deal with the super minions right now. They are in trouble here. Gambit once again being forced back into their base. There goes the turret. That's the second one to fall. Peke, meanwhile, on that top lane. Now he's going to rotate round. They want the inhib. This is so good for Fnatic, and I think Soaz learned some lessons from the All-Star game where uh, the 1v1 matches were all about playing Casper's 80 carries, but Darian gets caught! Darian gets caught out, and the Bloodwell's not going to be there. Crescendo comes out, Alexis does try and prop his ultimate down, but instantly gets turned around, stunned out beautifully by Soaz. This really is Fnatic in full control right now. 21-13, second in hit that goes down. Third one is exposed, completely invisible. There's no way that's going to happen. They're going to take that down. The Nexus Tourist will be the next target and Fnatic look like they're gonna take another victory over Gambit here this will take it to 2-0 over them and more importantly it will tie them in the second place with Gambit in that top as they try and pad out their KDA Fnatic are the winners once again over Gambit beautiful game there by Fnatic all of the lanes performed excellently a couple of good gangs did come in there for a Gambit they got Diamond off to a pretty good early lead a couple of double kills came through a couple of fights were really great there but but you can hear the crowd chanting for Peke. He definitely held up right there. Six, five, and nine, a lot of death, but he was a big playmaker there. He was kind of the lone mage and made those initiations happen. Fnatic 
well-deserved win. Yeah, he was the real Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris there. Game of Death 2 as uh, Peke fought Alex Hitch and absolutely destroyed him in mid. 1-6-5 Alex ended. You don't often see stats like that from Alex Hitch, but it was all about Peke. And honestly, you could say it was all about Pushu because he went 9-2-8 at the end there. Obviously, it was all about Soas and Peke setting up the kills and cleanup crew came through. Alex Hitch having to stand up and say thanks for the beating you just gave us. We're going to go over to Joe and Jason to take us through exactly how it all worked. Thanks a lot, guys. And Jason, a, a scrappy game for a lot of it there. We kind of struggled to find a replay that contained a full-on team fight because there was a lot of skirmish going on. Uh, and just give us your thoughts on that one. I mean, we heard it there at the end. Peke, not the most impressive score on paper, but what he actually did making plays for the teams was a major role in that victory. Yeah, it wasn't really about team fighting them head-to-head. -head. It was just about killing them off one by one, which it's Peke set up many times. Not to mention Pushu with his ultimates. I don't think he missed even one during the entire game. It was no. just phenomenal, which you see quite a few AD carriers, unfortunately, just can't seem to land. And because of that, like they ended up snowballing that game where Gambit, they got the first blood. They got the early kill. They had Genja really far ahead in his lane, but then they couldn't hold on to it. So we're going to go into our replay then from this one. It was one of the only team fights that really happened, and it wasn't a full five on five either. Yeah, it was almost a turning point for Gambit. It's about 41 and a half minutes in. It's 18 and 10 in favor of Fnatic, and the goal lead about 10,000. But let's get the replay on your screen and just show you exactly what happened here. And it was when Gambit finally turned around one fight um, in the end. And it was all due to Darian actually getting the really strong engage onto Pushu, who pretty, up, pretty much set up this fight. But we'll get the replay on your screen very shortly. And, you know, it, it's a little bit disappointing because, as Freak was saying, you know, Gambit, off of that kill, they didn't really get anything done with it. Yes, they pushed down middle. Yes, they got a turret, but they didn't ward up. They didn't really prevent Fnatic from getting the Baron right off of that, and they didn't stop that because that, in the end, turned it around for Fnatic to just pretty much push through their entire base. Yeah, we'll jump into that replay in just a moment, but first of all, you know, that is Gambit, the team that were top of the league coming in today tied with alternate. Fnatic really closing that gap out once again. It's it's incredible what we're experiencing here in the SS. And I think Freak uh, mentioned it there that there's probably no one that can be counted out probably right until the last week of, uh, yeah. of the LCS Summer Split. It's crazy. I mean, if you imagine, if it stays this close to the last week when we have a super week, so every team's playing five games, if you're within a five game split of all of each other, anything could happen that last week. And right now, I believe if Lemon Dogs do win their game today, we're going to potentially have a four way tie for first. That is ridiculous. That it doesn't. Well, it makes a lot of sense because, uh, and at the same time, doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> as well because we're over halfway through a season. You know, most of the time you'll see after half a season a definite split. We saw it in the summer yeah. split as well. That you know, a definite bottom half and top half where you were always talking about fourth and third could switch maybe with first and second if they have a good run and similar on the bottom half of that where maybe the you know the, the fourth and fifth could interchange yeah. well that was about it and this time around it honestly is the top team at this point could end up last and the last team right now could end up winning the the entire thing and it's so great to see that Europe right now is just you can't separate these teams. They're beating each other on a weekly basis. You really can't write a story better than what we're seeing right now. I mean, just imagine, any of these teams can win the, win the, win the playoffs, but having them close this close the entirety of the season is just something never, I mean, I never really expected to because, you know, the new teams coming in, I mean, in your head, you're thinking there's no way they can compete with this, the Spring Split LCS teams. They've been having 12 weeks of this, 28 games each, of preparing and playing against the best in Europe. But then they come in and they're like, hey, guys, you know, there's some other teams out there besides you guys that are really good. And they showed everyone up. And I really can't wait till we get a week in for, or just further in until things can really come down to the line where teams are going to show their true colors of whether or not they're a really great team or just an okay team. Yeah, and I'm really wondering if we're going to find an example of, you know, alternate at the start, even, even MYM at the first week, you know five wins without a loss. I think that if we actually have one team that does that, that could be the team that then goes on to win. Because right now, no team has been able to really string win after win after well, win together. I think the only one I can think of though is NIP, seven and two. That is that is a huge streak. I mean, you're definitely right. Like it's it's just constant back and forth. Like you're saying, top sweet bottom, bottom beats top, week in, week out. And NFP, I think, is the only team in my head that's actually had a decent win streak coming into this. And right now, I believe they're actually sitting at second place or tied for second place. So we're we'll see if they be able to come through the things. And just imagine, like for NIP, just the Cinderella story back in the spring split. You know, start off terribly, end up coming back, end up getting back into the summer split, and then just to go on into the world playoffs. You know, potentially, that's that's really big. So let's have a look back then and uh, get that replay on your screen. 
screen now so we can have a bit of a highlight from the Gambit versus Fnatic game. And this is that team fight that we were talking about 41 minutes in. Yeah, so let's just kind of refresh your memory here. So it's 18 and 10 in favor of Fnatic. It's about 10,000 goal lead in favor of them as well. And it's the one fight that Gambit was finally able to really get back into things because they just kept getting picked off one by one. And we're going to see Darren. He's going to go for the engage on a push here because of Diamond getting the nice issue on top of that. And the thing was, push you, he uses ult on the Diamond. So Darren's like, all right, I can finally get in there. I can finally sit there without getting fully CC'd and do some damage, which he ends up doing. They end up bursting push you down. But Darren, he ends up getting dropped into his passive. But the thing is, look at Genja's bullet time right behind this. He's like, oh no, Darren's really low. I got to save him here. And he pops the bullet time right on top of him. So then no one on Fnatic can go and save him here. So he ends up getting uh, getting back up, staying alive. And then, of course, uh, Gamma end up just chasing him down. Xpeke eventually does die. So as eventually does die on top of that. Um, or obviously, Xpeke did take Diamond down before that happened. But it was just a little unfortunate. Like, they had that moment to finally get back into it, but they just did that little bit of an oomph, like that little extra, you know, maybe one ward, maybe getting out of their base in time to stop the Baron would have changed things around. Maybe a bit more from Galio there. Obviously, Alex not having the the, yeah. the best of times, I think we can say with Galio. Nice to see him coming out, though, as uh, Freak rightly pointed out. That was a big champion for him uh, earlier on in uh, League of Legends back to Season 2. So we're going to head over to Shox then, who's standing up on the main stage with the man himself, ex -Pique. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Peke, once again. Your second victory here in Tenerife. Tell us about the, the picks of Gambit. They go in for Aatrox, seen him before, but the Galio pick for you must have been annoying in mid lane with all that magic resist. How did you deal with that? Antes de nada, eh, felicitarte por esta victoria. La pregunta sería, eh, ¿nos podrías hablar un poquito de lo que vienen siendo los picks que han tenido, los, vamos, en este caso, los enemigos Gambit? Hemos visto a Atrox, que es un pick no muy usual tampoco, pero a la vez hemos visto a Galio, algo que es aún eh, más inusual. Cuéntanos algo. Sí. Uh, yeah, first in English. Yeah, the, the, picks, the picks we did were pretty much what we aimed for. Like, we were not sure what I was going to play mid lane, but Lissandra is a safe pick. If not, I will play something else. And yeah, when we did the first picks, we had uh, Elise, that's what we wanted to first pick. Then we had Son and Barros, which gives you a lot of CC on the team fights, and that's all we... After having those three picks, we could pick whatever we wanted, but we tried to go for a really hard team, uh, team fight setup with Ken and Lissandra. And they last picked Galio. Galio kind of annoyed us a bit. Uh, like, we, we knew it. Like, we, they picked Galio and then we picked Kennen because we were not prepared for it. And then we realized we had too much AP, so so us just went AD. And instead of running triple AP, kind of, with the jungle, we decided to run double AD. So Galio was forced to go Sunfire first. He was not so useful. He had almost no damage at first. And yeah, he was a split pushing, but he couldn't split put against Kennen at all. And yeah, I don't know. It surprised us a bit, but the longer the game went, the more confident we were that our picks were better and Galio wasn't going to be a problem. Y ahora en español, lo mismo en español, a ver si me acuerdo de todo. Eh, sí, la, la, la idea que teníamos era de piquear primero a Elise. Eh, una vez que hemos pillado a Elise, no, se, no han cogido zona, creo que vemos que iban a jugar zona. Entonces nos han dejado abiertos zona y Varus, que está muy bien. Ya teniendo zona, Varus, Elise. Tienes un montón de CC en las peleas, un, un montón de daño y ya puedes piquear lo que quieras. Entonces, después ya piqueamos Lisandra, que viene bien siempre, y Kennen, pensando ir a P. Pero como tenían Galio, al final, en el último segundo, se cambió las runas y las maestrías y se puso de AD, que va mucho mejor contra Galio y Galio se queda un poco inútil. Tell us how important this win is against Gambit, who is shared in the first place and being in the middle of the summer split. Hablando de la, de la importancia que tiene esta victoria, porque Gambit ahora mismo se encuentra primero y, y bueno, están ahí luchando por este, este split de verano. Uh, I think now we are uh, not first, but we're tied with Gambit. Alternate is first. I think we're tied with Gambit in second place right now. Uh, yeah. I don't know, it, it means a lot every win because all the teams are, at the end it's going to be, the difference is going to be about one, two games, I think. It's not going to be more. So every game we can win is going to be really important at the end of the season for the seeding. Sí, eso. Que está muy bien ganar a Gambit aquí, y sobre todo porque está en Tenerife ahí con españoles, a más gusto todavía. Y bueno, que ahora ya por lo menos nos ponemos empatados con ellos, y si Alternate pierde ya estaríamos todos empatados los primeros, lo que nos pone en un buen lugar, aunque estemos muy igualados. Finally. Tell us about that badge on your shirt. Hablando sobre, bueno, la pegatina o, o lo que tienes ahí en el pecho. A fan gave it to me and I don't know. Thank you. I guess it worked. It gave me luck. Y eso, muchas gracias a la que me lo ha dado. Mala suerte y al final ha funcionado. 
Some final words for the crowd here at the end of those three days. Is there anything else you want to say? No, que muchas gracias otra vez. Eh, asombroso el apoyo aquí de la gente y queda mucho gusto escucharos hablar a todos y chillar.